you're listening to You Would Think, the Philadelphia Flyers podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Collington, and joining me, as always, Kevin Durso. How are you, buddy? Doing well. How are you? Doing all right. You know, we're kind of creeping towards Christmas here, and mm-hmm. uh, quite frankly, the Flyers have given us the best gift of all. Um, we'll, be di- <laughs> we'll be diving into a pretty good week where the Flyers did indeed go 3-0. and uh, but before we do that, make sure to follow us on social media at YWT Podcast. Uh, follow Kevin at Kevin underscore Darso. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Um, but yeah, just jumping straight into it here. Um, we're gonna, it's going to be a little bit of a quick show today. Um, but we do have some good things to talk about. The Flyers went 3-0. and mm-hmm. So I, I, texted, I texted the group chat last night. And mm-hmm. I was mostly kidding, to be honest. But I said... Mostly. But I said... Are the Flyers elite? Now, <laughs> now I don't, I, like I said, mostly kidding. Right. <laughs> but they're 3-0. This week, they yes. just they, they just handled the Colorado Avalanche, who are a good team. Mm-hmm. They beat the Pittsburgh Penguins again this week, who, again, the Penguins have turned it around from a rough start and are a reasonable team at this point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, have been one of the hotter teams, honestly, because of how slow they started. Uh, so the fact that you got two wins over them in the last week and a bit, uh, you did also beat Arizona, who's <laughs> floating around that Western Conference playoff race. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Flyers are not just winning games. The Flyers right. are beating quality teams. Right. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm laughing because of the fact that as, as I'm watching Saturday's game against Colorado play out, I could already hear you at the beginning of this show. I already could hear where it was going because I know what happened the last time they went on a little bit of a winning streak and we sat there and we're like, huh, you know, guess, guess how far away it is from Thanksgiving. And it's, you know, what are we supposed to say if, when, you know, Thanksgiving hits and they're in a playoff spot, right? What are we supposed to say? That was two and a half, three weeks ago though. Yep. And you know, so what happens now? Well, right, because as we sit here today, we are recording this on Sunday morning, uh, December 10th, and Mm -hmm. the Flyers are in second place in the Metro. And like, I think still, right, because that's where they were the last time we had this kind of conversation. And by themselves, too, like nobody else has 31 points. Right. I mean, like, and then, well, just looking across the league here, the Flyers have 15 wins which mm-hmm. is as many as the Dallas Stars and more than the Toronto Maple Leafs, more than the Detroit Red Wings, more than the Tampa Bay Lightning, more than the Washington Capitals, more than the New Jersey Devils, more than the Carolina Hurricanes, more than that Arizona team we just talked about. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of, they've won a lot of games. Yeah, and and I do think And that, that is just I, straight W's. That's not right, points. Right. And I was I I thought about that today because how many times have we had the conversation about how they are, you know, and I'm not talking about this year or last or anything like that, but when we would have the conversation of they're in the playoff picture or they're close to it, and we would look and then at the end of the day go, oh, yeah, it's because they lost 10 times in overtime in a shootout and they got the yeah. loser point yep. 10 times. So it clouds how well they've actually played. They've lost and they're hanging. They've had two of those. Mm-hmm. Like You've played 27 games. You've had two of them. You Like, at one point in time, because I think – it didn't happen this week. It had this happened last week because they beat Pittsburgh the first time in a shootout. And when they beat Pittsburgh for the first time out of the two in a shootout, and it was their second shootout win in two tries, back to back weekends. Yep. They're sitting there going, Oh, so now they're a good shootout team. You know? Yep. And then all like you're now you have to throw in now that what they're a good overtime team. Yeah, they lost one of these recently to the Devils, but they've won Two of them, at least, against, you know, two, two overtime games against Vegas and Pittsburgh. Something is topsy-turvy about this season. Because what else have the Flyers historically struggled with? The penalty kill. Penalty, uh, penalty what, kill. Is, what is their best unit on the team currently? The penalty right. Penalty kill. S- something weird is going on. And are the Flyers elite was a joke. But, Kevin, are the Flyers for real? Are the Flyers an actual hockey team? Like potentially looking to make the uh, the playoffs, or at the very least, maybe add at the deadline. I uh, add at the deadline. T- well, no. Like, according- is it time to start having that conversation? Sure, because I think it's been brought up a couple of times. That's why you know Danny Breer was on the pregame show 
on NBC Sports Philadelphia before Saturday's game. And the, that question come is, and it's going to come up for the rest uh, until as we long get as there. I mean, winning. we're talking about yeah. we're talking about at this point. Once you know, if they you're, lose you're six, still... if they lose six of the next seven, the conversation kind of stops, and we go, okay, this is who they are. Sure, but as but long it, as it, they keep winning, I mean, they're going to. You've keep got two and a half months air. until the. Realistically speaking, I know it's a little more than this, but it's you about, have two and a half months weeks. until the right. You have two and a half months until the deadline. If nothing changes, I don't, and I don't know if they're going to buy, you know, like, I don't think they would, right. they keep saying they won't, they keep saying they won't. Briere has said the plan hasn't changed all of that, but there does become a conversation of, do you owe it to the guys who were here to try to do what you can without yep. doing anything? Like right. you're but not going to necessarily don't trade, like, don't trade Nick Sealer. Don't trade like these guys. Well, who right. are like, expiring. Don't like, trade Ryan Paling. Like one of the and, and like one of the keys to that conversation is, is like no, you are not trading the first round pick you got from Florida no, two years no. ago to say let's go get something that helps us make the playoffs or maybe win a series or whatever. You don't do that one year into the rebuild. But there is an element of do you owe it to the players who have so far proven everybody wrong, seem to have that chip on their shoulder to do so, and do you just let them move forward with this because they've earned that opportunity by, by just playing the way that they've played there's you can't take away from the fact that nothing's different about the roster that we talked about coming into the season that I and so many others buried as I don't know about going that. to be one of the worst. I don't know about that because you, I think coming, you, coming into the season, I don't think, I looked at this roster and expected Bobby Brink to have the impact he's had. I don't think I looked at this roster and expected Tyson Forrester to have the impact he's had. I don't think I expected Travis Sanheim to be I, maybe, oh, no, not, no, no. maybe not a Norris candidate, but a top 10 goal uh, defenseman in the league. Well, so, and that's what I've said about it all along is like, to so, me, the two biggest catalysts were Sanheim and Sean Walker. Those are two right. guys I sat there and I said, I didn't think this was going to happen. Not a chance. Absolutely. Brink and Forrester. The thing with Brink and Forrester is, is that like guys like that, I think they've contributed to a level that I thought was possible. I didn't think it would equate to winning because of other players. Like, like I said, I was sitting here waiting for two things. One, I didn't think the defensive core was going to be that good and have players that pitched in the way that they have. And I didn't think that there, I thought that somewhere along the line, and technically this is true, but it hasn't hurt them somewhere along the line, there was going to be a significant injury at forward that was going to derail everything. Yep. And technically they've had it because Noah Cates is out, but where are they missing a beat right now? They're you not. Know, exactly. And I, and, and maybe a big part of that was, I, I think the, the guy everybody assumes was going to be the trouble with injury was Sean Couturier, whether coming back and just not playing for, as well right. or re-aggravating an injury one way or another. I don't think we thought that that was going to be, you know, the way that it was. And I wrote, like I wrote down a lot of stuff coming into this show because of the fact yeah. that now we're another week closer. Like I had somebody like, and I've seen this conversation before. Um, and, and you know what? Carter Hart said something after Saturday's game that I think resonates with this as well, because Carter Hart just flat out said, I don't think people want us to win. And there is an, a, and, and I listen, and he said, I don't think anybody, and I don't think that's true. I don't think that there's anybody that wants them to win. I think that people are more interested when you're winning. So sure. people want them to win in general. But there is a crowd that sits there and goes, don't win now. This is not good win for later. the rebuild. Right. 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 Don't win now. Win later. Like, what are you doing? You Wait, know? For Mitch Kov. Like Wait for Mitch Kov. Wait for Mitch Kov. Right. And first of all, that hasn't been on the radar all year long. Not no. for, not with this coach, not with John Tortorella. John Tortorella doesn't know the meaning of the word tank. Doesn't even have it in his vocabulary. So, no, and we we know that all right. along. So throw that out the window. And you know what? Like somebody sat there. I, I got asked on Twitter. This was after Twitter platform, formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. You know, you know the drill. Um, but I got asked a question somewhere after the game. I think this was after. This was after the Arizona game. So we're another two days beyond this point where the Flyers are still in second place because this because the whole point of, by the way, where this is going is, is it, this included a screenshot of the Metro standings that look, they're in second place. 
And all and all it was was the comment was was we'll enjoy it for now. Fair enough. And my response, because I did respond to this, and my response was might as well. Last season, the early success of the first 12 games was a nice little run before revealing who the team really was. It's been, and at the time, it's been 26 games, now 27. 27. By by Christmas, and this is a very fair way to look at this because this is two more weeks. We're two weeks from Christmas Eve. Yeah. By Christmas, they'll have played 33. At some point, it's going to stop being early and just become the team's identity. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to fess up to. I mean, do you like what we're trying to come around to here? I we talked on last week's show. We said it's another test week. And what did sure. they do with that test? They freaking aced it. You can't do well, better than three and oh. And here's the thing. Like, I don't know. Like, there's always going to be. And I think it's fair that there's always going to be this. There's that shadow of a doubt right now that somewhere along the line, this is all going to be over. And it may sure. still be, obviously. Right. We all expect it to just, come crashing down at some just point. because you're 27 games into an 82 game season. Roughly a third does That's not meet. No, I know a lot of does, percentage left. There's it, it's still a big percentage and yep. and it, it doesn't take away from the fact that you are at the moment two points away from being right up there pushing the top five if you had two more yep. and you're four points away from being back, you know, the other direction. Well, you're two from points be- from being out of a playoff spot. Well, but I'm I going f- right I'm now. I'm even going four and being like, right. realistically speaking, going you lose out for one week and get no points you're possibly dropping to 20th. It's pretty much over. Yeah. But you're possibly dropping to 20th again. And I'm not, that's not trying to calm people down and be like, Oh, but if they go on a losing streak, they're back in a draft conversation. Like, that's not the point. The point is, is that's where this is where they are right now. And yes, that there's a lot of time for it to totally change the conversation, but we have to look in the here and now a little bit. We have to. Absolutely. And it's, and I, but I look at the, I look at the game against Pittsburgh and I sit there and I go, that was, Low scoring, hard fought, you know, had a chance to go either direction, you know. And then I watched the last two and I go, there were, look, there were moments where Arizona could have totally changed the course of that game. They were coming at them shooting gallery style at one point. But you ended up winning the game four to one. Right. There's a margin there. And then same thing with the Colorado game where you're getting challenged by their speed. They've got the skill guys. We know the drill with Colorado. You know, I've liked their team for years. We've talked about that before. And then all of a sudden it got to halfway through the third period. You're holding on for dear life in a three, two game and bang, bang, it's five, two. Yep. And then you get to a point where they're down to what was, what was it? They take the final TV time out of that game with four and a half, five minutes to go. And you're going at five, two, they got to really put it together right now. Well, no, no, this is what, this is five, two with five minutes going. You go, they're going to win the game. Now, like Colorado getting three goals in five minutes for as good as they are is still a challenge. Yep, They're going to win the game and they're going to end up sweeping the week and they're going to still be in second place. And and you start looking around at a few other teams, by the way, and you go, oh, by the way, you know what happened in in this in on this Saturday? Because by that point, Carolina hadn't lost yet to still not be right up with them. Right. And you go, the Rangers lost four to nothing to Washington. This division's all over the place at any given moment, you know? Yeah, it is. And yeah. and you're seeing that Washington team this week. Like, that's going to sure. be a huge game. That's well, that, a huge this, game. And I don't want to jump too far ahead because we're going to talk about certain pieces yeah, yeah. before we get to the looking ahead part. And But the, the next handful of games that they're going to play, and we'll detail it more when we get into, into the looking ahead portion at the end of the show, but the next yeah. handful of games that they're going to play involve playing teams that I think are another, you know, we talked about kind of this gauntlet that they were going to go through when w- around the time they played Carolina, Vegas, you know, they were going to play some teams that were good. They played LA during that stretch. Okay. This isn't necessarily that you're going to play the elite of the elite right this second. Like you're not like this stretch of games. That these, you come in, these are the teams you're in the trenches with. They are, but this you're, is you're also expect to be in the trenches with coming down the stretch. Well, and I also, I look at it a different way. It's yeah, those are teams that are you're right there with, but there's also going to be a stretch of games coming up after this that I'm going to be able to detail. And, and this is the group of teams that we thought they were going to be with, and they're not now. 
Right. So, so you have a chance to maybe show how much better you are than the teams that are in that range that we thought you were going to be in. And who knows if you come out of, you know, what happens? And I might look, I'll be generous with this. You don't have to hold second place. What happens if you come out of the next, however many games, Christmas break, and come out of it in third in the division and then start playing teams that are ranked where they are? And go right back into second because you're winning games again and th- and everybody else may not be. And then next thing you know, we're going to blink and they're going to be at 41 games and we're going to be sitting here having the same conversation, potentially. You know, you're not that far off from it. 27 games in to get to 41. It's another one of those, you know, what did we talk about 10 game segments before? You're getting yep. close to another to be in a 10 game segment away from being halfway through your schedule. And you're sitting in second place in a division at the moment. You know, right. like here, here's something for you, because I, I wrote I wrote a couple things down. We did this. I did this with you a couple weeks ago when I asked you about back to backs, because I asked, I asked you a question about last season to this season and how many back to backs did the team sweep. And you thought maybe one and it turned out to be none. And you could and you kind of couldn't believe that it was like for real. They really didn't sweep a back to back at all. And it right. turns out to be true. So let me ask you this. So the Flyers record is 15, 10 and two. And we're 27 games in. First of all. That already is essentially halfway to their win total from a year ago. They won 31 games last season in 82. They have 15 and 27 this year. That's already remarkable. This feels like the Travis Sanheim point stat that we were talking about earlier in the season. So so here's my two questions. When did the Flyers win their 15th game last season? Date date and or game number. Uh, I'll give you either or. Game forty-four. You're not far off. It's close, but okay. It w- it was less than that. Okay, but thirty-nine. Okay, and the date of the game was January fifth. I was gonna say something sometime in January. So. Well, and, okay, and th- and think about it. Why? Do you remember what was going on around January fifth last year when in the flyer schedule? I don't. That was around the time that Sam Harrison went on that little run and they won oh, like four out of five or something oh, like that oh, oh, okay. or five out of six. Right. Basically, basically the stretch that everybody pointed to that is sent that took them out of the Bedard running. Uh, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like that was because it was the only other stretch that they had all regular season that really looked like that. Like they had the beginning and they had this little, you know, the, the basically the Disney on ice portion they had. And then all of a sudden it was back to losing like they did. Because because obviously they they came out good. They had a 10 game losing streak. They won a handful of games here and there. Then they went on this little run, you know, and it changed things around a little bit. So. I want to go back to the point of Danny Briere talking about the plan hasn't changed because that's what he said pregame, right? Yeah. But has it, Uh, you know, has it changed a little bit? Right. Um. You know, I like I said, I don't think it means that you're adding players, but just hear me out on the rest of this. And then we're going to get then we'll actually get into the details of these handful of wins this week and some of the key key contributors, because there's definitely a few that I want to talk about right. because we because we have to. We have to talk about the reason there's reasons why this team is second in the, in the division and Absolutely. and there's individual reasons why it is. But let's just start with why, you know. What about winning? Why are they not just why are they winning, but how, like what what does winning do for this team now? Because obviously there's people out there that don't want this to happen, you right. know, that, that think this is a bad thing. And first, you know, John Tortorella has consistently said that they are out there to try to win games. Absolutely. So how can you be mad when they do when that's right. what the coach is telling you straight up is the goal every night, whether they have the talent to do it or not is beside the point. He's telling you they're going to go out and try. Of course. They're not going to just give it away and do what everybody thinks they're supposed to do. Right. Does it help you get a better draft pick? Obviously not. Obviously not. <laughs> but isn't this also part of the job that the Flyers have entrusted Keith Jones and Danny Briere to do? Yeah. Isn't it their job to, no matter what, where the team picks, you have scouts you have a development staff, you have management that are supposed to identify players that can make your team better, even then, no matter where you pick. Well, like, there are teams and, hit on 14th and 15th overall picks because they have to. Sure. And for the first time in a long time, I'm willing to give the front office 
a bit of a fresh opportunity on that. Like I know well, that's the Flyers, what I'm also saying. Haven't they earned right. that? Exactly. Like I, like, I know the I know the Flyers don't have the best track record when it comes to developing, you know, kind of that mid level first round talent, but that is an old organization that has essentially no carryover or very well, little carryover. And that's exactly it, right? You want to you want to talk about a new era of orange that you've been promoting since May, you know, and all that stuff. Develop like that. some prospects. That's, no, but no, but well, I, I hear you, but that's fine. You know what's making people buy into your new era right now? Your team looks better. Yeah. So people are going to buy in because at some point in time, you can't ignore what they're doing on the ice. And then what you have to prove on top of it. And let's put it this way. They already have a little bit because you can't look. You can't lump Cutter Gauthier into this because Cutter Gauthier was not a new era pick. But right. Matt Vay Mitchkov sure as hell is. And sure you can sit is. there and look at that and go, OK, you know what? Fine. That's a chance that they wouldn't have taken five years ago on that player, knowing what the situation was, knowing what the timeline was, they wouldn't have done it five years ago. Absolutely and they did not. this time and they've, you know, do you know what you're thinking for the first time in a long time? Honestly. Okay. And this goes back to the Colorado game for a second. Nathan McKinnon scores a goal that only Nathan McKinnon can score. Not only, but only yeah. a handful of players like that can that score. Was it's McKinnon, yeah. it's McDavid, it's Matthews. And there's a handful of guys who can, do what McKinnon did to score that. That game. is that is elite hockey talent right there. That and you're looking at that, and you're, and you're looking at that, and immediately your thought is, well, the Flyers don't have a player like that on their roster right now, so they sure. can't do that. But there is a little bit in your head that should go, but do they have a guy in the system that can? It seems like it. And they might have a couple. Maybe, but... maybe they have a guy, like, at, at the very least, you sit there and you go, boy, you know, for everything that was said about Mishkov, I sure hope that that's what he looks like. Because if, if he, that's what he looks okay. like, then they get to a new level. If he looks like ninety percent of that, you're thrilled. Sure. But if he, but if he hits that level, man, I know. I'm not. And, I'm not trying to get too excited here, but, as you know, the Flyers fan podcast or whatever. But man, that's the kind of thing that you you start looking at. Right. The word. The word multiple. Sure. And I know. And like, but you know what I mean? Like, finally, there's a player within the system like that. You you don't have to sit there and worry about where do you go to get him? What, what, you know, where do they have to draft to get a player? Like that? You drafted one. You drafted yep, one that's going to get talked about. There's a lot of stuff that's got to happen for it to happen at this level. But right now you can hope and you can sit yeah. there and think you've got a player that that warrants that hope. And the best part is in terms of roster construction, and I know we talked about this kind of when they drafted him, is that he's, for lack of a better term, he's not on your roster screwing it up by being too good, right? Like, <laughs> how many games did Connor McDavid win the Oilers his rookie year before he got hurt? Sure, and like and look so, better at right. So for my roster perspective, it's almost good that he has another couple of years to cook in the KHL. Well, sure, because you're sitting there looking theoretically. Well, you're looking at the, yeah, you're looking at the record and going, how much better could it be if you have that say, guy? Say, put Matt Vay Mitchkov on this team now, and all of a sudden it looks a little silly. But uh, you preseason well, in terms of the roster construction, and again, assuming it is still all going to come crashing down eventually, um, it is a good you. it is a good thing that he's not on your roster. You know, getting you too many points. You know, right. if that is where but you that, end up. But this is where this is where the winning conversation comes back in a little bit because we we consistently talk about. And constantly talk about development with, and younger players. And like we've been through this so much already. We don't need to rehash all of the fine points. Right. Especially, you know, but here's the thing about winning, especially when you're rebuilding. Rebuilding isn't just a roster thing. It's not just, you know, like putting the pieces together to win games and do all that and have a roster that's good enough. You're rebuilding a mentality. You're rebuilding mm -hmm. a culture and identity. You're rebuilding belief in a room and a key part of rebuilding is obviously the part where you gain more talent and there are ways that you do it. You draft it, you develop it, then you acquire it to finish everything off and think you have a roster that's good enough to win. And a big part of identify of that is identifying the talent and the skill you mold it, you form a roster that has talent and implement a style and identity that helps you win games. There are many things that you can teach in this process. You teach power play structure, penalty kill structure, five on five systems. You work with individual players on their skill sets. What do I want you to do? What do I think will make our team better? You know, all that type of stuff, et cetera, et cetera. You can do all that type of stuff. You know what you can't teach though? You can't teach how to win a game. 
because it just has to happen from everything else that goes into it. It's not something that you just you just don't just manifest winning. You know, it takes something else for like to happen for you to win. And you have to have the belief and the identity and work on the details and apply the skill. And it all has to come together. And you can sit there and try to keep building the best roster possible. But sometimes the best player that's out there in the world doesn't win you anything because there may not be an overall identity to your team. That's the one thing that this team has. We said it last week with the show last week because you saw what the title was last week. That's what their identity is. I'm going to I'm going to hit you with a little bit of a hot take here. Sure. I agree with you that you can't necessarily just manifest winning. You can manifest losing. But that's what I'm I, saying. I, and I think a lot of credit I'm going to hit something specific here. I think a lot of credit needs to go to Danny Briere for getting rid of two guys in your room who are the definition of manifest negativity. You traded Kevin Hayes to the St. Louis Blues. We knew he was a core of the locker room. We mm -hmm. knew how poor his attitude was last season. We know, we or we can at least comfortably surmise that he was unhappy in the locker room. And I'm going to I'm going to keep it as mild as I can. But you we can comfortably surmise that he was not particularly thrilled with how the team, where the team was at, where the team was going, et cetera. And that's the kind of negativity that I've talked a lot on this show about potentially affecting your room. So you get rid of him, you cut him out, and then you have King locker room antics himself, who's gotten healthy scratched in Carolina half a dozen times already this season. Uh, and you get rid of him as well. Maybe maybe swapping those two guys out for Sean Couturier and Cam Atkinson just in terms of personality is enough. Well, and, and then on uh, the ice as well, but I'm gonna, just, well, just in the room, just on I'm the gonna, culture note. And I'm going to amend your statement a little bit because, and there's okay. a couple of reasons why, and I want to give full credit here because Charlie O'Connor wrote a story that first wrote a story and then talked about it on the, on the show that he does for okay. all, all PHLY um, that, also kind of brought this up because I just they just talked about this on on their show for, fairly recently. Okay. Um, the thing about Kevin Hayes is I don't think Kevin Hayes was net like and I agree with this and this is what they were trying to talk about too is it's not that he was necessarily a locker room problem among teammates because sure. what did we used to and what did we used to sit there and call it we used to sit there and say remember it was the Johnny Gaudreau tampering committee Absolutely. and Kevin Hayes brought all his buddies in to be in the room. So right. I don't think the room hated Kevin Hayes. No, no. I do I, think that I, I think you're right about the way he performed at the end of the year. And that had a lot to do with his relationship with John there, Tortorella. There were some pathetic you, performances in there. And when, you, no, and when you play like that, it can rub off on other people. That part I'll agree with. Yeah. And D'Angelo aside, because I don't I don't even need to go in. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But throw here's a guy who you didn't mention, who I think actually comes to play. And this is going to refer back to the story that Charlie wrote. That, uh, that this is from okay. a few weeks. And this is from a few weeks back, by the way, that Charlie wrote this story, because the story didn't even have to do with this guy. It had to do with Travis Sandheim. It had to do with a current flyer and how well he's doing. Right. But there was a quote in the story. That indirectly without even saying the guy's name made it clearly obvious who he was talking about. So I'll tell you what the name of the guy was that he was talking about. It was Ivan Provorov because apparently Sanheim brought up in this particular story that one of the quotes was something about guys like it, there's something about guys making mistakes and I guess owning up to it instead of like instead of assuming that it's always somebody else basically. Oh man. Like, so Listen. You took away a guy who thought he couldn't make a mistake, even though we all saw him make many mistakes. Ivan took his shots already. It's it's perfectly fair if there's a little bit of fire in back. So, well, and 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 like exactly. So and like there's there you go. So like, but let's let's get a Flyers Blue Jackets rivalry. Come on, <laughs> come on. We've been in the same division for the like Blue a, de a decade now, and we and just I, don't care about them. Here's the thing. It was it was several weeks ago. We we brought this up because when the last time they played the Blue Jackets. That team's got enough problems of their oh, own as it is truly. to even bring up worrying about another team. There's there's a lot of talent on that roster, but they also sure. have some major, major problems. But yeah, now on top of all of it, Boone Jenner's hurt for six to eight uh, weeks or whatever yeah, it is, right? Or something like that, six weeks, because he just broke his jaw. So yep, good luck. They're, they're playing the lottery game, and that's fine. Again. again I, I, but I would love to see a rivalry come out of that at some point. No, like, but by the way, okay, hold on. But by, but by the way, they're playing the lottery game game again, yeah. right? Like you just said or whatever. 
we didn't, you know, huh, funny how one player drafted third overall that makes the NHL this year didn't solve all your problems. Right. You know, well, right. Over, exactly. the, over the last three years, you signed the big, you made a, you made a trade that was notable because it was one of the biggest one for ones that we've seen in a long time. You made, you know, you made the biggest free agent signing of the off season the next year. You went wheeling and dealing this off season, bolstered your blue line with players that should make you better across the board. We're supposed to, by the way, getting one of your own back on top of it. Yep. After he missed half the year. And then you, you picked third overall. And when you picked third overall, pretty much everybody assumed that in reality, you got the second best overall prospect out of the, out of the pool. By the because, way, that that guy might be doing the he's too good winning you too many games thing because like they could very easily be at the bottom with San Jose. Um, it's been five you know, or there's, six up. So. Well, there's been a game. There's been games where it's been a struggle, and I no think no, no it's been bad. We're talking about the 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 bottom of the league, but they could be even worse if Adam Fantilli wasn't playing. You know what? Decent. You know what? And um, well, I I'll get you know where I'll give you that. Okay. If you're going by just wins and not loser points. You're right. Yeah. Because they have just about more than any other team that's right there. Like they do have more than every other team, but they're like miles above just about every other team except if you're not Minnesota. Yeah. They're they're in terms of by the way, but but in terms of win total, you're right there. I mean, you're tied with there's there's only th- four other teams that are in the same ballpark as you. Right. And there's not much more you can say, but I mean, no, let's put it this fair. way. The team that is the worst isn't the worst by that much anymore. No, San Jose won a couple of games and you know, good for that. San Jose honestly. won a couple it's, San Jose won a couple cool. of games that sure make I'm going to tell you what, you know what they've done by winning a handful of those games by the way? It sure makes when the Flyers lost the first one a lot more of a distant memory now because Absolutely. they're hardly the only one anymore. And oh by the way, I believe I saw since that game the Flyers are 10-3 and 1. Something like that. Or something it's, like that. The Flyers like, are yeah, let's get back to the Flyers here. So you, sure. you you were talking about some individual players. Uh, sure. Hey, Kevin, who's leading the team in goals? Travis Konechny is. And yes, I want, he I, well, is. And I want to bring up, this is going to bring up two different points as we go through this, because it's going to bring up your penalty killing point, because yep. he scored, he had a shorthanded goal this week, which is another one for the team. Join in general. the club, They've got, kid. Right. It's another one for the team. They've got seven on the season. That's remarkable in and of itself, Crazy. obviously. Um, so he's got how many goals this year? I'm sure you're 16. looking at it. Okay, yeah, and I which I knew puts, what the, I knew what the number on was. Pace, by the way, I saw what the number is. Go ahead, forty nine. It's like forty eight, forty nine. Yeah, I had forty eight. El- Elite prospects has it on forty nine. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um. um so I want to. So so by the way, so in the league, there's a small. It's a small list, by the way. How many players have 16 goals or more that are equal or better than what Travis Ooh. Konechny has produced goal wise this season? Uh, so and, I haven't I haven't looked at this. Sure, um, that's why I like doing this because I know you haven't. And I did so. <laughs> six. six. It's seven. Okay, pretty close. Okay. Who do you think is on that list? Because there's a list of players I have that he's doing better than that is kind of shocking. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm pretty sure Elias Patterson is up there. No, not in goals. Pedersen's got points. Really? I yeah. could have sworn he had a bunch of goals. Okay. Not um, not 16 or more. I thought he did. Okay. He might be at 15. I didn't look at that group. Yeah, he's definitely I didn't, close. Well, but, and I didn't okay. look at that group as much. Like I looked the guys that I looked at that connect me's better than I'm looking okay. at guys yeah, who have like me. eleven who have like eleven and twelve that I'm sitting there going, Oh, they're in the eleven and twelve range and connect me's now at sixteen. Like right. it's like, not a small yeah, gap. It's not as small of a gap anymore. Okay, like who? Uh, that he's better than? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, I'll tell you the closest one right off the bat, and it's not like it's one. Okay, like this guy has fifteen, he's got sixteen, but he's doing better than Sidney Crosby is this year. Good for one. Okay, but there's a list of guys that he is significantly better than right now, goal wise. Okay, uh, Braden Point and Brad Marchand have twelve. Yeah, Braden Point's on my fantasy how about, team. I, I how knew about, all about that how one. About, how about a guy who scored a goal on Saturday? That Konechny outscored within the, the the game that he was playing in. <laughs> Nathan, Nathan McKinnon. McKinnon has 11. Okay. Know another player who has 11? Leon Dreisaitl. Ooh, who that's... normally is at the top of this list. Yep. And has a little bit of that uh, Alex Ovechkin, who I, I believe is also still below him here. Well, uh, Ovechkin's number is staggeringly low. 
Compared well, right. And, and he, um, here's a guy. Dry's has got a little bit of that. Like, where you kind here's of a guy whose number is here's a guy whose number is lower. And I saw. I know he's scoring a little bit more because I saw his, his, him all over a highlight reel this week. Okay. Connor McDavid has nine. Um, wow. Wow. How about a guy well, who you know, Edmonton's now uh, finally dragging it out of the the bottom? So a li- okay. he is, but a it's still nine goals and Konechny's at sixteen. Just say like it's yep, like absolutely. McDavid's yep. got to go on a run to get to sixteen before he like whatever. Now, By the way, I, I saw this... a stat. I saw a real quick stat yesterday, sure. just on McDavid. He's at eight hundred and eighty-four career points. It's not impossible that he hits a thousand this season. I already know where you saw that, by the way. But yes, it was not. Dangles Twitter. Sure, Shh, it's fine. No, no, no. I know, but <laughs> well, you know what though? Do you, do you know why we're talking about that? Because a few weeks ago, when they were ter- like truly terrible. Yeah, like they've at least improved a little bit. Where I'm sure they you were could... shockingly bad. Right, and. Since the coaching change, they've been a lot better. They went on a they've been on a run. I feel so bad for Jay Woodcroft. And McDavid is doing McDavid things. I, th- I think at one yep. point in time, didn't he have like 16 points in seven games or something like that? Dude, in a seven yeah. game streak or something like that. And yeah. all of a sudden it was like, oh, we're back. You know, and right, we're back the on the Connor McDavid show. Now, this one, this one I threw on the list, and it's a little bit unfair because he did miss a little bit of time. So Jack Hughes has 10. Okay. I only did it because of the gap. It's like 16 sure. to 10 is still a gap. Okay, you, know, so you said there. You said there are seven o- players above him. And, o- and Ove- Ovechkin, by the way, is the other one I wrote down because Ovechkin's shockingly at five. It's, I was gonna say he's still at like five, isn't he? Yeah. I don't remember the last time that I saw Alex Ovechkin come into maybe a game in Philly in December and have less than ten. Uh, right, and uh, and we are. We've talked about it before. He's the kind of player where you kind of expect at some point in time there's going to be an eight game stretch where he scores twenty three goals. Maybe like that's going to happen, you know, and, but you uh, know what the thing, but you know what the thing about that is honestly though, like n- now, now that he's into second all time, all eyes are on that race. That's fair. And, and it, I'm not saying that to that's the, the, to the point where the team but, doesn't even care about the roster really to an extent, but like, you know what I mean? And it's just, right. it's just interesting to watch. All right. So you want to go into the seven that are better or tied. Yeah. Some um, of them are obvious. So if you want to list like the ones that I ha- I didn't mention below, that would K- be up Kucherov's there. Kucherov's up there, right? Kucherov leads the league with 19. Pa- Pasternak's up there. Pasternak is tied with him at 16, okay. which is all okay. which in which in and of itself is remarkable. Okay. Uh who else is there? Uh has, has Panarin been producing like that? Panarin is tied with him for okay. with 16. Okay. There's well, there's one more very, very obvious one that you okay. should mention because I didn't say oh. Who, out of all that group of goal scorers, the dry sidles, McDavid's, McKinnon's, there's a guy who I even mentioned him earlier in terms of skill set about the type of guy that you dream of having because he's better remember. than ever. Matthews. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair. Matthews yeah. has 18. Sure, and then there's three more on the list yeah. that maybe, I mean, three more on the list that there's one that I would never expect you to think would be on. <laughs> the, I wouldn't even think he would be on this list. And okay. then there's two others that you go, they're good, but, you know, it's just right at the top. I'm. Uh, I don't need you to go crazy with the okay. guys. If you want to take one more shot, go ahead. But like, yeah, then I, then I want to move there. it along. Um, it's not a Dallas star, is it? It's not. Okay. Uh, um, if, it, it, well, here's here's one hint for you because you asked about Pedersen. It is. There's another Canuck. That oh, is, it's Besser. Is, yeah. So Besser's at 18. No, no. Um. There's another, and there's one other one out of the two that are left that I think has done enough to join the conversation of being because. He's he's going to be a star player in the same way that Pasternak is, where he's his calling card is goal is definitely goal scoring, and okay. he's better than everybody else on his team at it, and that's why he's always up here. And it's not Jason Robertson. <laughs> no, it's it's another West team though. Okay. Uh, quick little scan through the West. Canada or non Canada? Canada. Okay, that narrows it down dramatically. Uh, and, and, not, and not one of the not one of the Canada teams we've already discussed, like Edmonton. Okay, so it's not Ed, it's not like Nuge. Okay, um, so that means if it's not Edmonton, if it's not Vancouver, that means it's Winnipeg. Is it Shifley? No. Oh, it's Kyle Connor, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Kyle Connor's yeah, got no, seventeen. Hello. And I'm giving you the last one because there's no way you would expect this guy okay, to be go up for there, it. especially at this stage of the season. Sam Reinhart has seventeen goals this year. Yeah, I mean, he's a good goal he, scorer, but he wouldn't be the guy that you would think would join that. I mean, didn't Chris Kreider score 50 one year? Sure. This and feels Kreider's a lot. Goal. This feels a lot like that. Sam Reinhardt is essentially the same player as, as Chris Kreider. Well, do you know what's interesting about that whole group, by the way, too? But well, like 
Panarin's up there. So like, yeah. okay, there that's your one ranger, I guess. But it sure feels like I mean, Kreider's at 14. <sighs> so he's not far behind. I mean, that's by, him. That's I him. mean, but I mean, to be fair, by the way, the other because I said Crosby has 15, right? So the only two others that are directly behind Konechny that have 15 are Zach Hyman and JT Miller. That's it. Then you're into four. Then you're into 14. Another Canuck, by the way, JT Miller. Right. Whew. But like, do you know where else I wanted to go with this kind of two? Because there's two guys who have 13 that I almost included on the players he's ahead of list because they were off to such hot starts that it would wouldn't be shocking if I told you they had 20 by now, the way that they started the year. William Nylander and Alex DeBrinket are still at 13. Wow. And for a stretch, it was like they were at like what eight or nine, and Konechny was at seven. And it was like, oh, yeah, Konechny's right up there. But it, it slows down and the other guys catch up. And it did. Like, right. it just turns out that, In the by the way. direction that well, most people expected. Well, no, it just turns out that when you play a week where you go 3-0 and as a team and you score four goals in two games, that you're going to jump some people along the way. Pretty good. Because Well, because let's put it this way. Pittsburgh played games since then. Crosby scored his 15th in the game against Philly. Right. In Philly on Monday. By the way, just on mentioning to bring cat, uh, did you see uh, the, the the Patrick Kane goal? His first. As yes, a I did. Man, it's weird seeing him in that jersey. Well, it, feel, it feels very chelly. It does feel very weird. Um, I don't want to jump too far ahead again. OK, okay. Gonna, they're literally in the looking ahead part. Oh, of OK, that's like, fair. That's like fair. they're on the schedule for the upcoming week. They're coming to Philly this upcoming or the following like next weekend. So. I don't want to jump too far ahead because okay. I get a, like, obviously I get a look at that, you know, man, and, that's crazy. and that's and, and there's also like that roster, by the way, there's some question marks that are going to come up about that because there's some things that happened over the weekend that we got. We're waiting for more information. Let's just put it that way. We're waiting for a lot more information before we can say who's going to play in that right. game on Saturday in Philly, that's um, that's specifically with two of their forwards. Um Right. But uh, um, as we but, sit here, okay. I kind of so that's so that's a Travis Konechny part of it. No, by the yeah. way, Konechny this week had four goals, three is in or not not this week, in the last five games. I wrote this down because here's something else that's happened over the last handful of games that matters. Okay. You've got some lines building chemistry, especially now that like and mm-hmm. I'm no and and this is not look nothing against Noah Cates, but when a guy comes out of the lineup and guys step in and start filling in, you got to look for opportunities where it fits. There are. At this point, you have an entire line that over the last five games is point per game. And then you have another two players at forward that are not at point per game, but solid, like definitely solidly above a half a point a game contributing. And and really, like you'll pick up on, on it pretty quick when I mention two of them that or the other two that they really contributed a lot more in the last couple of games than they did in the first couple of the, the five games I'm talking about. All of which, by the way, the five games, like they've won four in a row and the fifth game was the New Jersey game where they still got it to overtime. So they're on a five game points streak. Right. So that's what qualifies this. And then there's a defensive pairing that is right near point per game as well. And I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that one's an easy, that's an easier one to figure out because what yeah. defense they're pu- putting up points. But the line of Tyson Forrester, Sean Couturier and Travis Konechny, you can't Ooh. touch that right now. Coaching wise, I mean, you can't do anything to that. Like they've got to play together. That is with with the production of Travis Konechny this year and the emergence of Tyson Forrester because he has looked really, really good. Uh, that is an NHL first line. It's it, looking, might not, it, it might right. not be a top tier NHL first line. I'm not, you know, delusional here, but that's an NHL first line. That is that is not embarrassing be- because the thing that you're going to circle as you look at the and specifically at the Pittsburgh game this week, because we already talked about the Pittsburgh game in Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh game this week, you go, you won the game two to one in overtime. And who did everything beyond and uh, beyond the other obvious answer in that equation, which we'll right. get to because I have him written down to um, is Forrester scored the goal in regulation. And it's a two on one with Konechny and Couturier in overtime and Couturier scores another overtime winner. Yep. Just you just your you top know, line. Right. Producing. You know, That's well, all it is. What happens for teams that end up being good when it counts, you lean on the best players. Yep. When and you get when you get two goals in a two one game against the divisional rival, they both come from your top line. That's, and, oh, that's, and oh, by the way, in the game itself, because Konechny's got four goals in the last two games. Yep. 
he had a game against Pittsburgh where he could have scored two to three more with the opportunities he got. He Probably. didn't. He ended up with two assists in the game instead. Doesn't matter. He'll take it because they ended up winning the game. That's what, and so it doesn't matter to him. But I can't help but think about the fact that we're already sitting here talking about he's got 16 goals. He was He's right up there with these league leaders. And the game he played on Monday was so good that he could have ended up with two or three more. And then been like at 18. If the Flyers are a real team and end up kind of staying in the playoff race and making the push, Travis Konechny will get Hart Trophy conversation. Well, I don't even need to go into that discussion. You know know where I want to go with that one is simply put, what have we talked about since almost the beginning of the year? Because there's a lot of people that sit there and tell you they should trade him. He's their best trade chip, all that stuff like that. And But he falls right in the middle of it. And you know what? No. Do you have a true superstar on the roster per se? Not necessarily. But he's a, he's enough of a star. He's an all-star. Absolutely. And you got and, – and you know what? For a team that we constantly sit there and talk about doesn't necessarily have a guy who – I think you can sit there and go, oh, he takes over. Like, I don't, I still don't think Travis Konechny takes over a game like McDavid. And I, I don't think no, he ever will. Not. No, no, no. Because no. McDavid's another class. But Konechny may fall into that tier that like Claude Giroux did all those years, right? I agree. Like, I agree. Well, and the thing is, even Travis Konechny's 26. Mm-hmm. Three years from now, he'll be 29. Like, even if you are trying to build a young team with, you know, a Mitch Kov and Brink and, you know, all these young kids and Forrester and Gauthier and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You, you still know what need he, veterans on that team. Do you know what he is at 29 when that, if, when that happens? A phenomenal veteran, probably your captain. Uh, one of, one of your leader, like I mean, one of your leadership right. core. Yeah, exactly. Like he gets a letter you, at least. Yeah. You, you can't have an entire locker room full of 25 and younger. Like it just doesn't work. Like you need some amount of grit. You need, you need the guy who's chirping of Guinea Malkin in the stadium series. You, you, you do, but that you do, but you know what? Over the course of these last handful of games, he hasn't even been that like noticeable doing that. That's like, fair. He's still a pest. He's still going to stand up for his teammate, but he's not go. He's not doing it near at the level. If, and look what if, and look what's happening instead. He's he's literally just going in there. You know what? Sc- score a goal on a on a little bit of a breakaway or whatever the case may be. You know, in for your second goal of the game in Arizona, like he did on Thursday. I know he did this. And I know he scored two in Colorado too. But like for the second one in Arizona, and take your shot. Skate to the side like you do, and then look at the crowd and do the come on, you know, you know whatever. Because because that's kind of his thing. He just, he's sure. been doing that a lot, and it's like, do go ahead and do that. You know why? Because that's how you're hitting other teams. That's how you're hurting other teams at this point. You're not trying to go in there and be a pest every single like you are, but you're not doing. That's not the only thing you're doing. You're scoring wow. goals that are lit- you're scoring goals, especially at times where you're literally taking and putting the dagger in them. Uh, obviously, well, where where was that Colorado game going before the penalty shot? That's fair. You're you're I, getting was, you're getting pushed on. They're pushing on you. They're absolutely. They're putting and all the pressure on you. It's a one goal game. You're one mistake away from something happening. And he gets a rush and he gets taken down before he gets the shot off. So they call the penalty shot and he goes in and it, it didn't have to even be like. Is it a pretty goal? Absolutely right. not. The thing hit the pad and spun and like, you know, spun like a golf shot and went <laughs> right into the net like he wanted it to. You know, but. You take it and he walks away and he, and he skates away from it with this look of like, yeah, okay. You know what? Cause it's a game changer at that moment. You're almost halfway through a third period that you've been holding on to the whole game or the whole period. And now you've got breathing room. And and what happens a minute, not even a minute later, you add you, another one. The now the game's all, over yeah, the extra insurance, but right. Yeah, and now and the game's over. Cause you just ripped their heart out after the start of that period. So it's, it's not a clean one for one comparison because they don't have the same accolades, but if okay. Travis, if Travis Konechny's career roughly follows that of Brad Marchand, I mean, is anyone, is, is anyone upset about that? No, you'd be thrilled. And it seems like that's kind of where he's at, where he can bring especially, it. Especially, the- especially if that's not Gauthier and not Mishkov. Like if right. they're different personalities and take on the comparisons of different players, then and you do need a little Marchand, bit of that somewhere, you know, right. like seriously. No, and I'm not trying to say this is the way it's going to be because I like Gauthier does not have this defensive ability nearly this defensive ability but what if Gautier was your Bergeron in that equation and what mm-hmm. if Mishkov was your Pasternak mm-hmm. and then Konechny's your Martian who's got the little edgy side to him yep. you know what I mean and that's what I'm saying I'm not comparing because first of all to compare anybody to Bergeron's 
insane. Of, of course, right. But I'm saying, but I'm saying, in terms of building a top line, what if Gautier gets it gets if Gautier gets even a mild two way ability about him, right? And then Mishkov's your star. And I can see Noah Cates being a decent little David Krejci. A little bit. The problem with Cates is, and look, being injured doesn't help because now of you're course. missing time. Of course. But the point production. But we're talking about long term development. No, I know. The, the, but this year, the point production just wasn't there. You're talking about a guy who right. last year had 13 goals, 38 points, and this year in a quarter of the year had a goal and three assists. The production sure. wasn't there. Like, like I wrote down a couple of different players and their comparison numbers just going from like from year to year. Let's let's do a couple of them. First of all, because Konechny's the easiest one. And by the way, Konechny is a funny one to look at because Konechny's got the 16 goals. He's hit more than halfway to passing the career high he set last year. We're barely a quarter, like a third of the way through the year. Right. You know, he played 81, by the way, or he played 60 last year. I'm sorry. So in six. So maybe, you know, maybe it was always in there to begin with, because if you go off of the 82 game pace from a year ago, it was already pushing 40 to begin with. Right. So he's definitely on track for that. The funny part is, is he's only got seven assists this year and he had 30 last year. So he's nowhere close to like matching the goals and the assists to be that total points. But maybe that balances out by the end. Thing, so. But maybe that balances out by the end of the year. I mean, we, we what did we say? We said a third of the way through the year. He's still well, like on pace. He's still on pace for like the 61 that he had last year. Point and, and anyone will tell you that goals are more important. <laughs> Well, he's right. and maybe that. Uh, look, if that's more of his calling card, you take it. Here's a here's a couple of others. I'm not going to mention everybody I wrote down because that would take too long. But there's a handful I'll go through. Joel Faraby, 82 games last year, 15 goals, 39 points. This year, 27 games, 10 goals, 17 points. It's almost right on par. But you know right. what number is better? He's got 10 goals already, and he had 15 in 82 last year. Yep. He, Someone's, you know, someone's got his goal scoring touchback and, and he's, and he's another one who scores in a bunch of different ways. It, he, it can't, you know, it comes and goes, he's going to be streaky, but sure. And we've talked about the fact that he looks like he has fully recovered from the surgery and is starting to be a little more comfortable. And that is but something if, that he might even still be shaking out a little bit. But by um, the way, if Travis Konechny is on a near 48 goal pace, let's just say. Sure. What's 10 and 27 look like? It's and at least 30. Right around, right around 30. Right. Yep. It's at least 30. Pretty. I'm pretty happy. So Joel Farabee that. might be a 30 goal scorer by the end of the year if this keeps yeah. up. You know, Tyson Forrester's turned it on lately because now all of a sudden the numbers look a lot, a little bit better anyway. Five goals, 11 points and 26 when you started the way that you did and couldn't yeah. put together an offensive number for all of the details that they talk about. You couldn't put together an offensive number. And now he's kind of putting up points on a regular basis again. And that that's a byproduct of playing with who you're playing with. I mean, you're playing with the team's leading scorer and you're playing with John Couturier. Um, that helps, but still Owen Tippett, nine goals, 17 points in 27 games. He had 27 and 49 and 77 last year. He's, he's right on that pace again to be basically 25 to 30 and he'll, and he, and his comes and goes. And he's, he's on that third pace. line right now. Uh, second ish, second, third ish. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I mean, you're getting production from your lineup. Sure. Yeah. You know, but those are those are really the four guys to me. And, like, because Brink doesn't even qualify for this yet. But right. but those are the four guys to me that I – or four or five guys to me because I'm inclu – because I'll include Couturier in it because Couturier, we have nothing to go off of from the last handful of years. <sighs> right. You don't do compa – and you don't need to do comparisons for him. He's been in the league long enough that you know typically – You know who Sean Couturier well, you know what he was at his best. His, at his best, he was 30-some-odd 30, 30 goals and 75-ish points. Yep. So – you and know. also, by the way, winning the 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 Selkie, the Selkie. I mean, it's, sure. <laughs> so it's not, not just seventy five points; it's seventy five points with elite defensive skill. So yeah. So so what is he at this year? You know what I mean? So he's at six and thir six goals, thirteen assists, nineteen points in twenty five. Yeah. I you know is is six goals in twenty five games going to put him at thirty? Probably not. Uh, is it going to put him at twenty? Yeah. Good chance. Yeah, puts um, him in the sixty range on the points, and roughly. is yeah, roughly sixty. You know, and it depends on how much he heats up as the year goes on, too. I of mean, course. like we're talking about, we're talking about a guy who was playing for the first time in nearly two years. The power and, play, the power play clicks for two weeks, and all of a sudden he's on a seventy point pace. I don't even it, know if it, it needs that. I mean, he can get that, right. you know, in a variety of ways. But that's all right. So that that's one key guy. We need to talk about the another player, and I'll, I'll make this a part of the reason as our discussion for. Uh, them be in okay. second place because yeah. this guy's probably 
one of you know if connect me's your number one skater reason that you're doing some of the things you're doing then this guy's another reason you're doing the things you're doing so we got to go to goaltending carter we got to go to carter hart, hart. so carter hart has a 919 save percentage which, which by the way among good. legally which among league leading qualifying goaltenders is seventh is that good it's really good Top third um, of the league. Did, do you, do you know what else ranks tie, tied for seventh among league leading goaltenders? Is it a two a two point four two goals against average. Um, that's what happens, by the way, when you lose four games in a row, like he did. And to be fair, half the people above him are backups on great teams. So, well, that I went. It depends. Like I looked, I did it based off of what the league ranks, and it's some of the guys are legitimate enough that I kept them in there. No, I got you. But like, quick's a backup. Yeah. He's playing a bunch of games, but he's still a backup. What uh, one of Thompson or Hill, like they're kind of splitting it, but you know, right? You got some really, really, really. But good I, but I'm but I'm saying this is what happens, is what happens when you. But this is what happens when you lose four games in a row, like he did, and it goes down a little bit, and then you win three games, you give up a grand total of four goals over the three games, and your save percentages individually from the three games we're talking about are 969, 962, and 947. Right. Then your save percentage shoots through the roof. Like, I looked, like, speaking of which, by the way, and I know that Colorado is a talented team. I'm not trying to say it, but I blinked and looked up and realized all of a sudden, oh, yeah, by the way, they took 38 shots in a game. Oh, yeah. Like, they were we can sit here, we, like, we're going to sit there and talk about Travis Konechny a whole bunch because of the way Travis Konechny played and scores two more flashy. goals. And all Goal, that goals are flashy. Well, goals are. and But we're but we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Owen Tippett having two points in the game. We're going to talk about Bobby Brink and having two points in the game. And, and Joel Faraby scored another goal and this and that and all that. And Travis Sanheim with two more points, a goal and an assist. The goals are not even part of his regular thing or anything like that. And how about the play, by the way, that he makes two on the assist to drive the net with confidence? Like, Tortorella flat out said it after the game too. He didn't do that once last year. And he's probably like, I'm not sure if he didn't do it once, but he's probably close to right because I don't recall having him ever having that kind of confidence last year. He's got no. tons of it right now. He's and, playing great and he deserves every ounce of it. He's sure. Great. And yet you blink and you go, oh yeah, by the way, Carter Hart made 36 saves on 38 shots. They took, by the way, at the right at the very tail end of the game for a second, it was 37 on 39. Somewhere along the way, they took one of yeah. them away. Oh, okay. Um, but it's nonetheless. And and oh, by the way, the rest of the week was thirty-one of thirty-two and twenty-five of twenty-six. And and you you literally sweep the week with him in goal the entire time. Yeah, and and I know the stats don't necessarily show it, but I think Sam Erson has been playing pretty solid. I know he had a a rough start to start the season, and you know things have been a little rough at certain points here, but. So Overall, is, recently, I think he has looked much better. He has. This is yes. this is this is why you have me here because I actually yes. did. The, I I put the numbers together from his last yeah, four, yeah. first starts for you. Yeah, I'm looking at his last four. Yeah. Okay. So a 921, over, a 909, just, a shutout, so, and then a 906. So over. So overall, he's got a 278 goals against and an 885 save percentage. The 85 85 doesn't even rank Atrocious. on the charts. Right. Right. And and a lot of that has to do with that with that one game, by the way, where he gives yeah. up seven against Anaheim. And I said, you know, if they were smart, they would have left, you know, Sandstrom to be the backup that day. So you could have gotten him out of there. So it doesn't look so bad at the end. Absolutely. And um, then he comes out of that game with a 720 save sure. percentage and seven the, goals on the record. The 278 overall actually is tied for 16th in the league. Yeah, that's coming around. Right. Yeah. So it's like if you want to play the game where you're like, oh, by the way, Carter Hart's tied for seventh, but there's backups ahead of him. Then throw Sam Harrison's tied for 16th and say, listen, he's up there with the top 20 goaltenders in the league in goals against, despite the right. fact that like there's other starters that fall into that equation. Like, I believe both of Toronto's goalies have a worse goals against. It's not by much, but still it would be like, like Joseph wall was right below him at 280. Okay. And it's like, oh, he's actually playing like forget Carter Hart for a second. Harrison's playing better than by the numbers than Toronto's goalies. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, well, but here's but, goals have been one of their problems. But here's <laughs> but here's but here's the goals against and save percentage of the last four games for Harrison. The goals against is a 1.92. <laughs> and the save percentage is 932. That's those those are much better. Those are elite numbers. Yes. And now that is a, a small stretch, but that is but production. he's your backup. Yep. And and it's well known he's your backup. Right. 
So. And if he keeps playing like that, then you're going to be able to give Carter Hart a little bit more rest sure. and a little bit more I, breaks and keep him a little more fresh. And By the way, can we make another note on Carter Hart really quick? Because this is yeah. also, we've, we've talked about this in the past and now it's actually kind of like, I'm, I'm talking years past and it's finally yeah. kind of, it's finally kind of being realized. And I look, I do want to look, I want to throw the caveat on it because for, for right now, you know, look, we're watching this team with Carter Hart and goal, and it looks like they have an answer to that question and all that stuff like that. Because this is by the numbers, by the way, if you go with the 242 goals against the 919 save percentage, these are his best numbers of his career since 1920. When Oof. everybody thought you had your answer then, right? Like Can those three years in between brought everybody down a peg, made everybody or made a lot of people in the fan base think he's not your answering goal. Trade him, do this, do that. And he's answering the call nightly anymore. I do want to throw it in with the caveat that we like, we're not, I'm not trying to gloss over the, the still hanging question in the air that doesn't seem to have a resolution. Of course. Of but course. for now he's a flyer. And for now he's the answer to your problem of, of goal. Well, and for now he's tied for fourth all time in franchise wins. That's what I wanted to bring up because we talked about it back in 1920 when I think after 1920 or somewhere in the range of it, he was pushing 50 at the time. And we're like, that already is like pushing top 10. Man, by the way, the guy he's tied with, Wayne Stevenson, only played 165 games. He That's played crazy. He That's played crazy. back from like, you're talking, he was playing 75 to 80-ish. And the team was just ridiculously good at right. the time. Right. He went, he went 93-35, 23 times. I was going to say, and I was going to say, for what it's worth, by the way, because it's crazy. Well, he he's tied for that one. He wins another game. He, he passes. He's fourth, pass all, he's, right. he's fourth all time among goalies. Then the goalie he's chasing for that's context. The, that's the wildest part to me. I that the stat popped up on the broadcast the other night. They showed the top five. They showed that Carter Hart was racing the list, and I looked at it. And, and one I and two, see, and, uh, no, and by the way, one and two are exactly, exactly who you think they are. I see Ron Hextall at two forty, and I go, okay, that makes sense. And then you I see, see Bernie, Bernie next. Perron at two thirty one. That makes sense. Then I look down, I see one hundred four, and I'm and I say, oh, that's a big drop off. I wonder who that is. Is it was Pelly here long enough? Was that one of like Checkmonic or Van Beesbrook? And I look over and it's Steve Mason. Isn't it nuts? I mean, and <laughs> this show started. Steve Mason was the goalie. <laughs> That's true, actually. Um, oh my god, Steve but, Mason was the goalie on this team when we this, but you this show but, started. But you get by the way. Gonna... Episode 200. I just first time I wanted to mention that here. We're yeah, I know. In, I figured we were, I know. I figured we were going to like, as we wrap, we were going to hit. Yeah, we are. Absolutely. Things. As we did, we were going to hit a couple quick things. But yeah, in yeah. that room, like this is, that was my, my whole point. And I, I think we had talked about this, like when Hart was getting catching steam in 2019, 20 was it's not going to take much. The records are very attainable to at least get well, up there. Not necessarily. Like, I don't want to make it seem like he's well, like you, you. Never want to make it seem like he was going to be around long enough. I just mean you climb the list to do two hundred wins or anything like that to be one of those guys. But only three goalies in Flyers history have a hundred, and it was right. very distinctly possible that you were looking at a kid who came up at twenty years old, was winning games with some regularity at the beginning of his career, right away, and go and go. Uh oh. He's going to be the fourth one. He's going to be Steve, the fourth hundred guy, and he might pass. Watch out, Steve Mason. Right, and he'll pass Mason pretty quickly because Mason's literally sitting at one hundred four. So he gets to one hundred five. Like at this point, based on the way they've started the year, we're only twenty seven games into the season. If if he, he needs, signs, a, he needs he what? Si if he signs another contract in Philadelphia, he's going after those records. No, but he but he needs what? Eleven wins to get the third all time. Yep, he's getting it this year with the way things are going. Probably. He might like, get it by the end of January, the way things are going. Potentially. I mean, you never know. But, but you <laughs> by know the what I mean. All-star break. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's just one of these things where you're like, listen, like, it's not going to take much for him to be right up. I mean, even the other numbers, by the way, his save percentage is one of the higher ones among yep. the group. And it's, you know, his, is his goals against there for his career? No, because those three years that were rough hurt you from a goals yeah. against standpoint. I mean, you know, and listen, we – we regard Pelly Lindbergh as one of the best goalies in franchise history. Straight up, his goals against numbers were not good because that was the era he played. And he played, you know, that was the Gretzky's era and all that stuff like that, right? Adjusted, it was one of the best. But by, by the way, if you include playoffs, Carter Hart okay. sits fifth all time at 102. Okay, so Mason has a few in there. 106. 
I, I said a few. I didn't mean a ton. So um, he, was only, he was only. I mean Hex. I mean Hex. Wayne, Wayne definitely, Stevens and Wayne Stevens. Uh, Wayne Stevens is still in between. Yes. He is still in between. He's at one hundred three. But but Carter Hart could pass Steve Mason for most wins, including playoffs. I mean, by the end of the month, by by Christmas um, and next month, I'll say maybe. I mean, only have, four. Have... he's at one hundred two. Mason's at one hundred six. Oh, for your for, okay, you're talking about including playoffs. Yeah, including playoffs. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He, yeah, he can say, do that by the end of the month. To, just, just to overall pass Mason in general, though, he's eleven away from passing him. I mean, right. on the regular season, is, is eleven yeah. is 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 it possible that we're talking? I mean, let's just say eleven wins by the All Star break. Absolutely, it's that is just, very it's, doable. It's a, I mean, it's possible. I don't now, know if, about if the, like, wheel, if the wheels fall off, he'll get there by the end of the season, and that's fine. But I mean, if if this team stays rolling, goal tendings. Right. The goaltending has been one of the keys to everything so far. I, I mean, agree. you can't deny that. And, and and it's part of what like like now they've won a couple of games that you say, OK, that style's a lot more sustainable. But beforehand, it was like, OK, the goaltending has been really good and they're kind of finding a way. And I, I and I still like the funny part was, is I still equate that to they found a way against Pittsburgh in that overtime game. Like there's right. a, there's plenty of chances where that goes wrong the other direction. Right. And I, I didn't think like I'm with. Tortorella on this one, by the way. I didn't think they played great against Arizona. No, I agree. And yet they won the game four to one. So like Well, and Arizona is not exactly a juggernaut. John Tortorella, find a way to beat them. If there's but if if there's something well, because I well, I think Arizona's a sneaky good team anyway, so I yeah, don't even need fine. to go there. But John Tortorella has a way, especially when you play a game where you win four to one like that, outside of your goaltender, who clearly was really good. Of keeping everything else in check and being like, eh, it wasn't that great. Like, you're second in the division. You've won four games in a row. If they went, by the way, and this will be a great looking ahead point. Yeah, so let's start with that. it. Yeah. If they beat Nashville, they'll have their second five game winning streak of the season in 28 games. Oh, well, the Flyers have won 10 games in a row before and missed the playoffs. So let's see if two five game winning streaks is better than one 10 game. They've also streak. they've also had two 10 game losing streaks in the same calendar, like in the same season and three in the same calendar year before. Oh, so stop. That was awful. I know. But I'm saying like, this is what I'm saying. Like he he's like they've everybody's got ways of making things like that. Try to seem better than they are. If you've lost right. a bunch of games in a row, it's we're close, though. If we're we just get a bounce, right. we're due for one. It's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And there are others where, like, and then you win a few games in a row and Tortorella is out there telling you, eh, whatever, you know, like we've won a few, but it's still not, we got a lot of work to well, do. Of, of course we are, temp <laughs> we, of course we are tempering expectations, right? Like that is kind of what this whole show has been about. Yeah, but it, you know it, what, then you, you and we, here's a coach we've talked about plenty of times because we like him as a coach and all that stuff like that. You got Rod Brindamore telling you his team looks like oh, they're going to lose 50 to nothing during the course of a game. They, they end up, you know. They they lost badly otherwise, but like it wasn't fifty to nothing. I think it was only five nothing. But yeah. my favorite, my favorite is Brian Boucher talking about it on the broadcast as Cam York is just absolutely dangling in the slot. <laughs> that's another. It was another, pretty, it was that's another guy, by the way. That's another guy, by the way. If he gains some confidence, what do you mean? If what do you he's, mean? Well, if he's, he's doing it, but I'm saying if he prolongs it over the course of mm -hmm. more than a, like a week or two. All right, so if he prolongs it, he will do it this week. Uh, let's talk about these teams that the Flyers got. Uh, so well, you mentioned Nashville here. This um, is an interesting game, by the way, because I didn't yeah. – like Nashville for a, a few weeks was awful. Oh. I mean, they were they were pushing the group that's at the bottom with your Columbus-level like level teams, right. right? They've improved now. Apparently, by the way, so they're, they're actually one game – or like a point better than the Flyers are in the last 10, if you want to okay. be technical about it. Um, but they're – um, they, they are, are in a playoff spot they're, they're in a playoffs for sure. They're they're seven three and and zero oh in their last uh ten games. Yeah, they're rolling. So they're having a good little run of it right now. And you know, despite the fact that the record says they're basically slightly above five hundred, they're fourteen thirteen and zero. Oh. That that's an that's an interesting stat, by the way. To look at a team's record 14, through 27 13, games and see oh. a zero. What team usually had like how many? There, like I don't think there's another team in the league that has a zero in the OT loss column. Anaheim, oh, Ottawa, dude, Ottawa. That's it. And also Ottawa, Anaheim. Yeah, you, yeah, I was agreeing with you with the oh, Anaheim yeah, no, and right, Ottawa. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Ottawa hasn't played near like Ottawa has played so many fewer games though. Like that's Ottawa's fair. only got twenty two games played. For Anaheim, it's a little remarkable. I'll give yeah. you that. 
But like, yeah, it's definitely remarkable. It's, otherwise, it's but usually every, NHL, though. But usually yeah. everybody's got one, you know, a something shootout loss, an right. overtime loss, something. Nope. But no, that Nashville team is clicking a little bit. Ryan O'Reilly looks pretty comfortable there. Like they're they're starting to put it together. Philip Forsberg still like the guy, Forsberg obviously. Really and Yos are. and and Roman. I look. I love watching Roman Yossi play. This isn't the home game yet. That's coming up very short order. Like this. This is one of those season series that's going to be over in the blink of an eye because we're gonna over the course of two weeks we're gonna talk about them twice and then we'll never talk about them again. Right. Probably. You know, maybe yes. playoff time if they're in the playoffs. I had them in the playoffs. I said they were, I said I thought yeah. they were a playoff potential playoff team. So I mean I, I did it reluctantly because I kind of couldn't figure out who I wanted to pick out of the West to be like the last wild card, but I'll give them, you know, I gave them a shot and they're actually right. like after being terrible to start the year, they're actually proving me right a little bit that they could be in that running. Right. Um and so then, you got them, you got them in the mix. I mean, here's the thing though. They're also right in the same category as where Arizona was and you beat Arizona. So exactly. If you, you can, you, they're right in your, like, they're right in your, they're right in your general class here. You, you know, you have 32 Absolutely. points. They have 28. And then after, after finishing the little mini central swing, uh, you do get to come home and play Washington on Thursday. Now that's going to be a fascinating game. Yeah. Because that's a team that technically you're better than in the standings, but points percentage wise, they're better than you. And it is also just been hot. Like again, another team that had a really, really poor start and has played really well since then to kind of overcome it. Um, yeah. What are they at in the last 10? They're five, four and one in the last 10, but they're, they're picking it up a lot lately. They've, they've cooled down it a little bit, but. That well, the middle win, stretch there, they were really, really hot. And the win they just had against the New York Rangers of all teams. I mean, to beat huge the Rangers for nothing, for nothing is a big deal. I it's mean, a it's a huge win for them. It's definitely a big deal. So they're going to be tough. And, and and again, there is always like Ovi's going to wake up one day. We think so. I, that that is still a ticking time bomb on any well, I mean, day now. He could just. Well, let's in. let's be real about something. I mean, you're killed like they, they they killed off a penalty against Colorado, and the first penalty they killed against them, it looked like it was just a straight up onslaught yeah. you know and it didn't have that didn't have to be you know what i mean like it, it, they could have if the it, you know what was it was interesting too is bush said something on the broadcast about you know man you don't want to give them many more opportunities and they gave them one more for the game like that was fairly you know like that was first period you were like it's okay this is out of bush <laughs> yeah i know uh but anyway so that's the washington game for you now let's let's get to this detroit game really quick absolutely as, as pa- we can well, the Patrick Kane big element story. is going to be a big is is definitely a big part of it because that's that's the new wrinkle to this whole thing or whatever. Um, Detroit as a team, just in general, by the way. Um, first of all, the former flyer element is heavy on this one because you met. I, I wouldn't be shocked. I'll just say it that way. I wouldn't be shocked if your goalie that night is potentially Alex Lyon because oh, he's hilarious. been getting. Because he's been getting some starts lately, so I wouldn't be shocked if that happens. Um, they obviously have like they have Huso and could be him, but Lions right. played a few games lately, and you could certainly bring him into the equation. But you're here to talk about top line or top pairing Shane Gostas Bear, aren't you? Well, I was going to bring him into the mix because of the fact that he does have five goals and 19 points in 25 games, and he's which playing are, with which, Moritz Sider, no, which are very to this point in the season anyway, which are very comparable numbers to Travis Sanheim so yep. far. I mean, like you're talking about like the, the resurgence of both. Um, By the way, I didn't know Marit Sider wore 53. That's pretty funny that ghost is playing with him. Yeah. I mean, ghost went back to like the play on 14, oh, where if he could get 14, he would wear oh, it. If he not, did, he flipped right. the numbers. Like he, he went back to that, but, That's fair. but we need to talk about two, pl- two forwards on the roster that may or may not be playing, depending on how things go. And again, it's all information to be determined later. Of course. The the, the whole situation in the uh, game against, they had against Ottawa on Saturday, Dylan Larkin ended up leaving the game for a little while. He was motionless on the ice. It was a very scary situation. Yeah. He somehow or other, as they had a stretcher out there for him, got up and skated off the ice with, he's with help dude. of his teammates he's, he's he is a tough those, like dude. stubborn tough old school and and dude. and to top it all like to top it all off too like within the week i think he had put out some very personal information that, that he and his wife decided to share yep that, like it was just like you know how much more it, is this guy supposed to good. take it's been a, it's been and he's and and to top like but but on top of it by the way he shares the really deep personal news that everybody like yeah you know obviously deepest condolences to his family all that of type course. of stuff yeah and he goes out, and I 
he either scored the game winner or the game tire or something in Buffalo or against Buffalo the same week. Like, you know, like right, that, right. Yeah. As they put it out, like, and the, the, the team's going nuts for him because on top of it, he's their captain. So Ooh, right. Right. they all know. Yeah. You know, and then they ended up having the game against San Jose that they looked like they were going to run away with. And then they ended up losing it, you know, kind of in shocking fashion. And then once they were down, they were not only down Lark and they were, they were down to eight. I think to eight, they played eight forwards for the rest of that game. They start, they already went 11, seven, um, against Ottawa to begin with. Right. They, in, they instantly lost two forwards on the same play. And then I think they lost another one as the game went on. So they were playing with like eight forwards. It was terrible. Um, and that, that's where part of the discussion comes in. Cause when Larkin's down on the ice motionless, David Perron went after Artem Zub and literally picked the first guy he saw to just throw a cross check high on, even though Zub, Zub was actually like Zub fell on Larkin afterwards inadvertently. Like he's right. battling for positioning there too. He wasn't even one of the players initially hit Larkin. Right. He ends up falling on him. He's standing over top of him, like looking like with this look toward the bench, like, please hurry up. Come on, please hurry up. And then just takes one to the side of the head. Yeah, that there's going to be nasty. There's going to be a phone call for that. Yeah. And I think that, that you, you almost want, I mean, let's put it this way. Detroit plays more games this week than the Flyers do. So this is not a straight three and three. So right. I don't know. I don't know if, if Perron's getting four for this. He might like I can he might I can see just as easily see two. I you don't know? think I don't think he has a history. So he, no, I, no. I mean, they're but they're, they categorize it the white the right way. It was an intent uh, to injure. As, as of twenty two minutes ago, Chris Johnston, uh, he has been offered an in person hearing, which means his suspension but, can be in excess of five games. So he it, might he might be getting it, the book. What here. what he did was very like and and again. It's hard. Look, sure, your captain's laying on the ice, motionless. It's hard to control your emotions in that spot. And he and he did. He picked the first guy he could he could find. Yeah. Um, wh which, by the way, the whole thing that bothers me about those situations is it has nothing to do with trying to go after somebody. You want a piece of somebody for what happened. What I hate is when they do it right over top of the guy's motionless right. body, as if that's not oh, a dangerous thing to do. Like man, Taylor know, Hall, Taylor Hall getting kicked in the head while he's unconscious will just always. Sure, oh. it's, like it's, it's just dangerous. Yep, you just see his head just. Oh, it's it's awful. Um, yeah, that is that is terrible, and it just just take it away from the play. If you want to scrap the guy, that's fine. Grab him and drag him out to center. Right, right. Like, and everybody on. wanted a piece of somebody, and you're like trying to, you know, you got to like, protect the player first. Like there's like, there's almost on. an element of two, and I think some of the Ottawa players were a little bit aware of this. At least, like it's like, all right, listen. I, I know what's coming. We're going to do this right now. Y'all are mad. Was, We're going. No, right. But there was almost an element where for certain players, it was, hang on a second. Like, like Lucas Raymond was huddling around for a second. And Raymond actually, I think, was better at it. Like in that sense, he kind of pushes somebody away. And it's like, I I know we're mad at each other right now. But no, just get out of here for a second so I can stand just over not, top of my teammate right. and wait for my, the trainer to get out here. Please. Right. You know, I want my guy to not get right. crushed here. Right. You know, I mean, like, like you saw how intense it was, too. I mean. It was Gossis Bear and Robbie Fabry were the two guys who grabbed onto Larkin's arms and helped him skate off. And yeah. Fabry's bleeding at the time. I mean, he's got his, you know, blood streaking down his cheek. And some old school hockey. Yeah. Right and now. he's, you know, yeah. nope, not me. Don't worry about me. I don't need, not even a towel. Just I, let's get this guy off the ice. And Larkin has, like, they, this is well documented in the clip, like, on the broadcast and stuff. That Larkin's got a history of neck injuries, too. So that's why it's scary on top of it. So Definitely. it's like, so. I so and and the thing is is they play Detroit not only on Saturday but then again in a week, right? Like the following Friday. So there's a distinct possibility depending on what happened with Lark and once we get more information because all there all it was was that he was being treated. He's obviously like he skated off the ice. He's conscious. It wasn't like one of those things, but the severity of it we have no clue on yet, and right. we won't probably until at least probably. later Sunday, maybe Monday even. Because Sunday yeah. might just be a day off for everybody, and they just let it sit for the day yeah. while he gets I'm, tested. It's gonna, it's gonna be a day off because I believe they have a back to back Monday, Tuesday. So it's, well, sure. It's, so there you go. But cool. and, and they're gonna have to let people know going into Monday what the deal is. I would I find it hard to believe he's gonna play Monday or Tuesday I at the very least. Why. The Grand Rapids Griffins are uh, scrambling to get a well, and and there. and to be fair, like that's why I even said you play this team twice in the next two weeks. It, it's it's yeah. possible he's not available, and that's Absolutely. and that's a and huge that's, blow for them. If that's but if that's the case, you have to win those games. That's the kind of thing. Well, 
if we're looking at this as a playoff push, right? Well, sure. And I, well, I get that. What I'm, what I'm going to say is, and this is what they were literally alluding to on the broadcast right before he scored the first goal he, he has as a Red Wing was, well, now, like, there's no such thing as easing Patrick Kane in anymore. You're no. playing with, you know, eight, nine forwards. He's going to play. He's going to get minutes. And he's going to so, play a lot. <laughs> so you're going to see a healthy dose of Patrick Kane next week. Yep. You know, like, you just are. And that'll be interesting. I, and we know there's chemistry with the Brinkett. That's going to be a key factor of this. There's already chemistry. Yep. And if they can the find thing, out, yeah. The thing that hurts with Larkin is ne- it, it takes a big piece out of the middle. Yes. Obviously. I mean, it takes a huge piece right out of the middle because Larkin's such a, such a well-rounded player, you know, and, and really for a team, like as that team got better, he was clearly one of the guys leading the way. And that's, you know, like, and for a guy who made the choice, he made the choice to stay. They weren't doing the best at the time when like the contract thing rolled around. And now they're, they were like, they're in a playoff spot too. This is a, that's why I'm saying very interesting there. If he misses some significant time, Stevie, why might look to make a trade? He might have to. Yeah. I mean, and, and it might be this week. Like we might see, I mean, you don't know, you don't know. Well, he Uh, played the long, he already played the long game when it came to Kane. So you might as well, you know, see what he has up his sleeve for that too. I mean, exactly. You know, we, we've we've talked plenty of times about the Iser plan, and sometimes the Iser plan has to take a detour, but he might figure out a way to do it. So, absolutely. Um, but this, you know, what's interesting about this week too, you, because you mentioned Nashville being in a playoff spot now too. So you're yeah. getting three, you're getting three teams that are right in the thick of it with you. Absolutely. You know, and that was kind of the case with, you know, Pittsburgh wasn't obviously, but that was kind of the case with Arizona and Colorado. Obviously, like you were going to get tested there. But you're legitimately getting, you know, you're going to play Nashville first. So there's a decent chance Nashville is right there in that playoff picture still as you play that game. They might be slightly out of it. Who knows? Because they're right on the bubble. Right. Um, but there's no questions about Washington. Like, I mean, Washington's technically out of the playoffs, but they have a higher points percentage than you. So yeah. you got to treat it that way. And then Detroit is still, you know, has pretty much consistently, not only has Detroit consistently been in a playoff spot, but the Flyers have one of the better goal differentials in the league or in the right. conference, at least. Detroit's one of the few that's better. Okay. And you gotta, you, you're gonna have to see what happens here. And and that that's the interesting part because Detroit certainly, when they had to play the game they did against Ottawa, that goal differential took a hit in that one game alone. They lost yep. five to one. Yep. You know. Yeah, it, it's it's another good. Uh, normal week in the NHL schedule where you got to test against three good teams. There's but wait, no freebies this week. There's no San sure. Jose's. There's no, you know, any of but those. What you gotta, uh, yeah. But what you got to factor in is, you know what? Detroit lost this week to San Jose and Ottawa, who are ranked 32nd and 28th. It's it's one of those any given nights. And if and and what what's the one thing you hear? You know, the one thing you hear John Tortorella say pretty much on a nightly basis every time they go into a game. What do you do? You know, what do you do to combat McKinnon? What do you do to take care of this guy? What do you do for this thing? Right? You know, it's play our game. Right. We got to play our game. That's all. Like he doesn't talk about anybody else. He talks about we got. I mean, and in fairness, he might after the fact, like when with McKinnon, he said the key was having somebody stay above him so he couldn't get to the net, and it happened one time and he scored on it. Right. You know, he had some other looks earlier in the game. They did a pretty decent job of containing him as the game went on. Okay, you made an adjustment to him. You figured out a way to play with him. There you go. Something that the teams you know, couldn't do a long years you know, ago. You know, so. along the way, along the way, by the way, com- you know, and I'm not saying it didn't mean they had looks, but completely silencing otherwise, Kale McCarr and Miko Rantanen, like that's a you good played, team. You played a, a good, good team and a good in- roster, and you held them. At bay. You, you played a good game against a good team. So, uh, speaking of good games, I think that was a good game here. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we wrap up as we head towards the last year of episode number 200. Uh, it's weird, man. I, if you had told me, you know, January 1st, 2017, or whatever year we started this show, <laughs> uh, Mike and I started in his basement on two awful mics with no pop screens. Uh, th- that we would be here, you know, 2023, about to head into 2024, 200 episodes deep. I, I wouldn't have believed you. So I hear you. And Kevin, you've been around for way more than half of it at this point, right? You were around before episode 100, right? Yeah, definitely before okay. 100. I think I came in around 50 ish or something like okay. that. Okay. I think, like, yeah, you were right around 60. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the first run that you guys had was about, was about 30, 30, 35. Right. Was yeah. in that range. And then for a little while, like when you guys brought it back and it was picking back up and things like that, I wasn't on right away. I wasn't on right away. Yeah. And I, 
basically I kind of had no choice. You guys threw me in as a regular member around the time that COVID hit. And it was like, okay, well now we got to just do like, we, we need something to do. Something to do. But we had so much fun with those shows. Let's talk because brackets. It was, sure. But let's talk <laughs> brackets. The funny part is, is half the people we were talking about those brackets work for the team now. It's true. It's absolutely true. And it has been a really great couple of years. And uh, we will, I mean, we're going here. We're, we don't have any plans to stop it anytime soon. The road to right. 300 starts next Sunday. You know, it's as simple as that. So, yep. Um, all right. I think that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, thank you all for watching, listening, subscribing, liking, all of that stuff. I don't think we say thank you quite often enough. So thank you for checking out the show. Thank you for liking, subscribing, following, like I said. Um, share it with your friends. Uh, let them know what we got going on here. Uh, follow the show on social media at YWT Podcast. Kevin is at Kevin underscore Derso. Um, yeah, we'll be here. We're just putting out good flyers news and good flyers talk and Right now, we're along for the ride. You know, is this the 2010 team? Who knows? Uh, we'll be back next week to talk a little bit more about it. And uh, until then, see ya.